Good afternoon, everybody. We're here for the OLA Building Awards, and we have Kitty Pope from Windsor Public Library, and we have Jason Grossi from G&G Architect. And we're going to be leading them through a series of questions, and there'll be a PowerPoint as well where Jason will go through some of the issues, challenges, and successes they've had with this project in Windsor, which is phenomenal, by the way. As, I, as a jury member, I, I'm going to admit that, that I was very taken with this project. So we'll jump right in. Um, what was the intent of the building project, and what do you think was outstanding or unique about your project? Um, so, uh, when uh, legislation changed in Ontario uh, for libraries that were housed in schools, all of a sudden a library that was a schoolhouse library in Sandwich, which is one of the oldest parts of Windsor, really uh, lost traction. And so it became very clear very quickly that we needed to come up with a new uh, location and a new design for uh, a library in the community. One that was a cultural hub that was significant to the heritage nature of the community. Um, and that really uh, brought the community back because they had lost so many of their uh, cultural community foundations. The, the other really significant thing was the actual site itself. Taking something that was historic that had a significant importance in terms of place within the community, but was abandoned and needing to come up with a new you know, revival of that site to make it useful for everybody, to make it uh, accessible to everybody, inclusive to everybody. This was a site which was there not being used for many years, but was significant. And how do you make that something that is energized again, not just for its current situation right now, but also in the future. So what were some of the biggest challenges faced during this project and how were they resolved? And then what were the lessons learned? The key portions of this building were the fact that we had two historic buildings on this site and they're both from different time periods. So I'm showing here in the slide, uh, the sort of before and after of what we had to do for the existing fire hall, which was built in 1921. And you can see the current situation now that it's been adapted or used for a library and then a stable, um, which uh, again was behind the site. This is all on the same property, um, in a very different state that you can see currently on the right, where it's been where it's been uh, restored back to what its original character was. We had these two pieces on the property, and you were asking originally what the goals were. Well, the goals were to put these two things together into one new library, <clears throat> and a library that was vibrant you know everything that a library needs to be it needs to be inclusive it needs to deal with change it needs to deal with uh flexibility multiple uses um, that was really the 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 goals which brought about the, the major challenges the a number of challenges we experienced on this project because of the fact that it was a historic property and you have two buildings there <clears throat> the probably one of the first challenges we dealt with was how do you unify and make two buildings from different time periods, two different aesthetics in themselves, um, express a new library. And it's not something you can force it to happen. You have to work with those buildings, understand what their key attributes were, what their limitations are, and allow those to become opportunities. So you have to really understand these buildings. The other real challenge was the, the soil conditions of the building of the site were just terrible. I mean, the, the soils are have no capacity for any to carry any load. And we had to put a new elevator in the building to make all the floors accessible. Um, that was one significant challenge. It was a brownfield site. It was contaminated soil across the entire site. Um, <clears throat> so we had those issues. And even from an access standpoint, if you look at the configuration, this is the configuration of the site as it was not as it's been restored. Um, there was a space between the two buildings. The stable was on this side here. The fire hall facing the street is here. It's right up against the property line. There's no place to put any new attachment other than here. Um, and you have to do it in such a way where your new building works with these existing buildings. So it's, it was that kind of a challenge. You know, How do you unify the language, the architectural language of a fire hall from 1921, a stable from the turn of the 19th, you know, maybe the middle of the 19th century, and then being honest to your time with a contemporary link that can bridge the two together. And of course, deal with the height limitations of the stable, which we weren't allowed to exceed. So you can kind of see 
the sort of scribble here of how to make that happen. The trick was a kind of push and pull where we pulled the massing of the fire hall in and pulled the massing of the stable in as well. And that created almost like a painting, painter mixing two different paints together to create an expression of a contemporary lick. Um, then we had height limitations. How do you deal with the stable, which is shown sketched here in the background with this new contemporary piece? In a sense, we kind of extruded the forms of the stable in a very polygonal way and created these, these sort of brace frames um, that actually carry a bridge from one side of the fire hall to the stable. We actually had people bridging through at an upper level to get from one time period to another. So it's about developing an architectural language which isn't something forced, but comes from the buildings itself. And then the other big challenge was, how does this fit within the community? How does this fit within the town of Sandwich? Um, this is done first. I always believe every project, design project, is an urban planning project. You always start from urban planning and work your way in. Um, this is the town of Sandwich, and the yellow buildings are actually buildings that we've worked on here uh, and restored, starting with the post office that's right at the corner, um, a new brewery, which really helped bring things and, and development within Sandwich. We're currently working on the restoration of Mackenzie Hall, which is an 1855 building built by our second prime minister. And uh, this is the Sandwich Library here, the John Muir branch. And how do we connect these from a pedestrian standpoint, from an urban contextual standpoint? This green spine you see here is probably years into the future, but we're thinking of it from a master planning standpoint. How can it connect Mackenzie Hall, the old jail? How does it relate to the street? I mean, this is really an important aspect of when you start from the design, you have to start way outside and work your way in and then from the same thing from the inside and work out. One of the unique challenges that we have here in Windsor is the fact that we don't have any local heritage trades. And so instead of making that a limitation, we looked at this from the opposite and said, is this an opportunity for us to teach heritage trades here and, and, and give young people an opportunity to learn these trades. There wasn't a single window contractor anywhere that could rebuild those historic windows. I ended up working with another architect and we had students from the college learn how to build windows in the historic way. Um, learning about masonry techniques and how to restore these, the, the fire hall, we had young trades learning how to do those skills, the heritage uh, restoration skills. So everything that we looked at from a challenge, we said, how can we turn this into something? How can we flip it on its head and make it something that is, is, is a good story for us? So it's truly the, the lessons learned. Um, there's two really up front. And the first one is that you need to have a perfect team all on board to be able to do this. And I say that quickly, but um, we had a mayor who is totally interested in history, we had a library board, who were on board from day one, totally excited about the project. We had a city staff who were fabulous in making the project happen. A design team with Jason and his staff who uh, looked after the big issues and the little issues, even down to the size of the grain of sand that we were gonna be using to uh, re rework the, the, the bricks in the, in the building. Um, a contractor who totally wanted to be part of the sandwich project. And you know, most of all, we had a community, the sandwich community, who were so excited from day one. The moment we, the moment Jason and I walked in one day and saw all these raccoons looking back at us, we knew that there was a community of raccoons and a community that was totally excited about the project. And uh, as much as the raccoons moved away, uh, we know that they definitely watched us because they're still trying to get in. The other piece from the learning absolutely is um, accurate upfront costing because uh, people say, well, if you're going to reuse a building, it's got to be cheaper than building one from scratch. Absolutely not. Yep. When you're looking at a, a heritage uh, uh, project, my best advice Double your, double your budget. And uh, luckily uh, we had to do that. And um, if it had not been for uh, the mayor and city council and the library board saying, we believe in this project and we're ready to put our money where our mouth is, uh, that wouldn't have happened. So our best advice is get yourself a great team, 
across the community and be very accurate about your upfront costs. Yeah. The picture that you're seeing here is, is a crazy idea that Kitty came up with. She wanted a mobile circulation desk. But when we actually programmed what had to be on the circulation desk, it ended up being this long, uh, ended up weighing over 2,000 pounds. And to integrate it into the structure of the building, you can see how it carries the same language as the new structural frames of the, of the addition. Um, but this can be moved easily by one person. The concept recognizing this is just, this library is only 7,400 square feet. It's tiny. Right. And so uh, because it has great acoustics, we want to be able to move everything out so that when we had programs and events, we could maximize our space. And so the need for some kind of a portable circulation information desk became really important. And, you know, amazingly, Jason, within a couple of days, came back with the brainstorm of what about. So, yep. um, again, it's that perfect team that makes it work. Well, you can see from the quotes and the crowds uh, looking down onto the main floor, people love this space. Uh, it is a public space. We are close to the university, so we get a lot of university students. Uh, and we are on a, a walkway. And so if you're in that library, people walk by and they wave at the library staff. The community absolutely loves the space, whether on the right hand side you see there uh, a story time or you see a program or one of my favorite shots on that upper left hand side, kids walking across the bridge. Uh, into the uh, local history section that this library is always packed with people and it will be packed again uh, now that we're open. But I think the key here is, is that this building needs to work for things that we haven't thought of. And that's the biggest challenge. And, and from the programming stage right at the beginning, you know, I, that's, that was a big, big challenge and a big fear. You have these very co you know, complex sort of things that have to happen with two historic buildings they're at different floor heights. You have to make the whole thing accessible and you have to create space that's public and that's also contemplative because a library needs all of that flexibility. And how do you do it with 7,000 square, with 7,500 square feet? Uh, that was the real challenge here. There isn't, there isn't even one inch that hasn't been uh, considered and how it can be used in different ways. And what would your advice be for a library taking on a similar project? Well, you know, I go back to making sure you have lots of friends because you're going to need every friend and family member to be on board uh, with this kind of project. Um, and then you need to be realistic about the budget. But I think I'd add a third piece, and that is you need to think long and hard about finding the perfect architectural partner. Uh, Jason and his staff had huge experience in heritage work, but they also were interested in reading and learning and public libraries and why we really are the cornerstone of democracy and communities. Jason and his staff understood that from day one. And so finding that right architectural partner who's going to work with you over four years uh, I think is really fundamental to making sure that um, it's a win-win uh, when all is said and done. Excellent. I, I have to say, you know, buildings are often designated. That doesn't mean they're saved. And I think what you've done is you've taken an iconic building, you've repurposed it, and you've saved it for the community. It's been there for 100 years. It's going to be there for another 100 years, at least. And again, it's become, it's a magnet, it's a cornerstone, it draws the community. Uh, like I said, the jury, unanimity, it was, it's a wonderful piece of work that you've accomplished because it is challenging. You know, it's much easier to level something, take a vacant lot and build. You had the vision and the will and the city had the will to support that, which is amazing. And that came from the very top. That was from the mayor. I mean, the mayor said outright, if we can't demonstrate how this should be done at the very top, how can we expect that from the community? Um, so really, th th again, that was from the top. Everybody on the team was unified in, in the mission. Well, I think, I think on behalf of the Windsor Public Library Board, um, we would like to thank OLA um, and uh, the folks who um, uh, gave us this great honor. We truly are humbled and we are encouraged that the work that we've done in the past 
um, we will uh, learn from and continue to build uh, great libraries uh, in Windsor. And if we can give example to all of Ontario, we are truly honored.